I'm Chris Desjardins, and I'm uh, I work with Agile Bits. Uh, they're in Toronto. I'm in Lincoln. Uh, we're all remote based, and uh, we make one password. And you know, I could shamelessly promote one password through this whole thing, but I just kind of want to talk over generally how to make your passwords unpronounceably awesome. So these are some examples of terrible passwords, and they're common. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Most common password in the world. And uh, anyways, uh, so here's a, a good example of an actual really good password. Now the problem is you're never going to remember that unless you're a cyborg or something. But this is where using a tool like 1Password would come in handy. 1Password can generate a password like this for you and remember it and then recall it for you when you need it. And so what you really need is one really awesome password to get into your password manager. <clears throat> and we do this through a process called entropy. Who can tell me what entropy is in the technical sense of password strength? Anybody? Not, sort of, sort of. Almost like randomness. Uh, entropy is measured in bits. And instead of uh, the number of guesses needed to find a password with certainty, it uses a base two logarithm of that number, which is given, and that number is the entropy bits in a password. So a password with, say, 42 bits of string calculated in this way would be as strong as a string of 42 bits of uh, chosen, random chosen information, like let's say a fair coin toss. You know, flipping a coin 42 times, completely random, completely fair, you don't know whether it's going to be heads or tails. You know, that's fair entropy. So, but, to put it another way, a password of 42 bits of strength would require 242 attempts to exhaust all possibilities during a brute force search. So, by adding one bit of entropy to a, or I should say, my note got truncated. That was two to the 42nd power of uh, attempts, not 242. Two to the 42nd power of attempts to exhaust all possibilities during brute force search. So adding one bit of entropy, two to the 43rd power, uh, that doubles the number of guesses required by adding one bit of entropy right there. Doubles what it takes. So, uh, that makes an attacker's task twice as difficult. On average, an attacker will have to try half the possible passwords before they even could find the correct one. They have to get through at least half. Now, when you're talking two to the 43rd power, that's a lot of time involved. And a lot of, you know, we're talking years here so of, of attempts. So, you still need a good master password to get into your password manager. Because your password manager can make things up to like 50 or more characters, which is fairly uncrackable. So what makes a good master password? Because you have to, um, you have to remember this thing. You have to be able to type it in. We're not seeking perfection in a master password. Instead, we're trying to find ways to improve master passwords if they aren't currently very strong. Now, a lot of folks use the same password for everything. Because, and it's generally what? About six to eight characters, or eight to 10, whatever the minimum is. Maybe I have two. <laughs> and, but you use them over and over, don't yes, you? Yes, absolutely, I do. Yeah, okay, so here's a... Here's a good example. Um, do you have an Evernote account? Yes, I do. And they just got hacked. They, the entire service got hacked, and they did a system-wide reset like 40 minutes ago. I know. I saw that. Password reset. So you ha your username is probably your email address, isn't it? Mm, maybe. Well, you yes. can log in with your email address. So, it is, yeah. So your, your uh, email address and that password are now out in the wild. Right. So if you use that same password for your actual email, you're in trouble. You have a lot of passwords. You have a lot of passwords to go change. 
So the, the importance of using something like Password Manager is you use a unique password for every website. And so I saw Evernote was compromised. The password I have for Evernote isn't used anywhere else. I just went and regenerated a new password using one password. Boom, done. So the thing is, is that you have to protect your password database, which is encrypted, with a master password that you can remember. We're not seeking perfection. But many of the schemes that we use to create a password ourselves are flawed. So if you have a master password that you can't type or you can't remember, it's a terrible choice of a master password because you're screwed if you don't have it. And if you forget it, you're out of luck. So we should change a weak master password. Otherwise, we should just leave it be. Because the important thing is that you know this. So we've all been told to change passwords on a regular basis, and there's still some circumstances under which that advice remains feasible. But it's not a good idea with one password master passwords. Ideally, you should pick a good master password at the outset and never have to change it. So let's create a password. The challenge we face is that we have master passwords that are not going to be guessed or we have to have master passwords that are not going to be guessed by password cracking programs. Yet, we mere mortals are incapable of remembering and typing it without being a burden. We need to be able to do this without having to keep it in a piece of paper in your wallet or something. So, what makes this a particular challenge is the fact that the bad guys know at least as much about passwords as we do, but probably more. So they're not only reading the same password picking advice that gets posted in places like this, you know, but they have studied millions of stolen passwords. They know more than you do, trust me. So the strength of a master password creation system is not how many letters, digits, and symbols you end up with, but how many ways you can get a different result using the same system. For instance, we could use spaces to make things easier. Let's use uh, two fictional dogs in your family, Molly and Patty. So your master password phrase could be, I have two dogs, Molly and Patty. The spaces add entropy. They count as a character. But you also shouldn't tell the truth. So you should say, I have three bats, Larry, Moe, and Kurt. But then you also shouldn't make sense. I have 35 bats, Larry, Moe, and Kurt. And then you should avoid predictable phrases. How many of you know what Larry, Moe, and Curly is? If you start off with just saying Larry, a reasonable person could infer Moe and Curly. You know, the three students. So um, that can be that phrase, Larry, Moe, and Curly, is very predictable, and the password algorithms, password cracking algorithms, know all about this. And so even though Mo and Curly add 11 characters to the password, those 11 characters are so predictable that they add very little actual strength to a cracking algorithm. So even though it is shorter, let's try using I have 35 bats, Larry and Amy, because it's not predictable. Security through obfuscation doesn't make sense, completely doesn't make sense. So along the same lines, we could actually take out this E in have, because have is a predictable word. But HAV is not a predictable word. So you, that E actually doesn't add much security. You could take that out. Yes, you're reducing the number of letters in there, but you're adding security because it's not going to run through. That word isn't going to be running through a uh, algorithm, or at least not as likely. You should also avoid secrets or things that are personally meaningful. So, Steph, you shouldn't have your password being I L U V U Dan. You know? I mean, because Dan's your sweetheart, you can find that out on Facebook, you know? So, um, also, capital obvious punctuation is completely obvious. So, capitalizing the beginnings of words or changing the word F O R to the numeral four really doesn't add much security to your password. So remember, if you can think to do this, the people who make a career out of password cracking 
and stealing your data, they've already thought of this too. So certainly add the obvious punctuation if it helps you remember, but recognize that it doesn't actually strengthen your password. So uh, what, what have we learned so far? Remember, we're not trying to reach perfection here. We're looking to instead create better master passwords that remain usable. So don't create trouble for yourself by picking a master password that is too difficult to remember or too difficult to type in quickly. So one way we can do this is to use a thing called Diceware. You can actually look this up on Google. It, it's basically a random number generator and it calculates a random number and there's a list where every word in the dictionary is assigned a number. And so you can draw a pronounceable, memorable master password using Diceware. And uh, so it rolls a uh, dice five times, gives you a number. Um, and you would repeat this for several words. Uh, these are just some examples from the list. And uh, the great thing about Dice Word is we know exactly how secure it is, even assuming that the attacker knows about it, because the security comes from the genuine randomness of rolling dice. It's unpredictable. And then you can't predict what order the words are going to be in either. So there's this uh, great XKCD comic. Anybody ever read XKCD? They did this, uh, I think, about a year ago. And they talked about passwords, and they did an incredible job in doing it in six frames. So I love this. They say, through 20 years of effort, we've successfully trained everyone to use passwords that are hard for humans to remember, but easy for computers to, to, to guess. So you have Troubadour, Ampersand 3. You know, they, they have all this stuff. This password only has 28 bits of entropy. We talked about entropy here. So 2 to the 28 power equals 3 days at 1,000 guesses per second. So then you're sitting there going, Troubadour, Troubadour. Was it trombone? No, Troubadour. And one of the zeros was, or one of the O's was a zero. And there was some symbol. It's hard to remember. Instead, you can use Diceware to come up with correct horse battery staple. Makes no sense. It has 44 bits of entropy. This is stronger than this. And that's 2 to the 44 power, which equals 550 years at 1,000 guesses per second. That's a good master password. Probably not now since they published that one. I wouldn't use that exact <laughs> one. But, uh, you know, you can sit there and think of a horse saying, that's a boundary staple. Correct. <laughs> so, you know, you've memorized it. You've probably already memorized it. So we talked about the two fictional dogs earlier, two dogs, Molly and Patty. Um, you could make your own little phrase there, 2D, Molly and Patty, that's memorable. Um, and then you can use Diceware to come up with cleft cam and Lacey. So you, might, you want to create a little weak password that is easy for you to remember that is unique, like two dogs, Molly and Patty. Um, and then you want to replace that, one of your dice rolls with that. And so then you come up with cleft, two dogs, Molly and Patty, Cam, Sin, and Lacey. And that is an incredibly secure password. And because it's easy to type in, because most of those are just actual words, you don't have to switch to a number keyboard or anything. You only have to do that once, and then you have the ampersand. You can type this in reasonably fast. And remember, the spaces add a layer of entropy. Doubles the strength of your password for every space. And so we're looking, we're, we are working towards better master passwords, not perfect ones. You should take only as much advice from this as you're comfortable, no more. Remembering and typing in your master password should not become a chore. If you do change your master password, you've got to practice it regularly so that you don't forget. Don't be afraid to write it down on a piece of paper for a short time and keep it in your wallet until you do know it and then burn it. <laughs> Once you know it, burn it. But I mean, you need to memorize this and you have to know it. And maybe you do want to leave it on that piece of paper, but put it in something like a safe, safety to security box, safety deposit box. Because if something happens to you and your spouse needs to get into one password, you know. Yeah, too bad. <laughs> yeah. 
hey, I'm paranoid and I think about these things. One of our users actually came up with a one password security kit just in case the crap hit the fan with you and you became disabled. This is for your loved ones to be able to get into your stuff. And that's freely available and it's like this form that you can fill out that you can give to your loved one or put in a safety security, safety so deposit box, you know. So, you know, you do have to think about these things. You are finite, so. Um, so even though a typical criminal may have access to sophisticated cracking tools, it's unlikely that they'll dedicate the hours or half a millennium to cracking your master password. Remember, we, I said that statistically it takes half of the time of what it would take for them to even come across a possibility of a match. So if your password has enough entropy to last half a millennium, who cares? You're going to be long gone by the time they ever get it, before their computer gets a chance to do anything. And so, uh, yeah, another thing, I, I left this slide up as my concluding slide because a lot of places use uh, security questions. And 1Password has this lovely little section in every login form called notes. And when there's a security question, I copy what the question is. And then I actually use a, I, I switch the secure password generator to being a pronounceable generator, which uses diceware. And I create something that is pronounceable. So if I have to talk to a phone rep, I can uh, speak it to them easier. And uh, then, uh, but I lie. And I record my lies. So that way I know what I'm dealing with. Uh, last week, I actually had to raise the limit on my Bank of America card because we're going on a big trip, my wife and I are. And uh, um, when I called in to raise my limit, I was asked, what's your mother's maiden name? This isn't the answer I gave. This is one I just generated about 20 minutes ago. But I basically said something like this, Hulo, Rai, Les, Pay, Fire, Kai. And the guy goes, there's just this long pause, and he goes, that's... Right. What? <laughs> and I go, I work in security. And he goes, oh. So, yeah. Lie about everything. And keep everything you need. Don't use the same information twice. If you have an Evernote account and you're reusing the same password and email combination somewhere, you need to go and fix that. Thanks for uh, coming and uh, learning about passwords, and uh, please, for the love of God, go and change your passwords.